Thanks for tuning in to No Wine in No Time. I'm your host Dave and today we're going to talk about a green skin white wine grape by the name of Vernaccia. Now Vernaccia is grown all over Italy, however its greatest expression is achieved in Tuscany around the town of San Gimiano. So we oftentimes see Vernaccia, the grape, di from San Gimiano. Vernaccia de San Gimiano. So that's the wine that we're going to focus on today. However, Vernaccia is a little bit confusing as we go to other parts of Italy. Because it can be a clonal mutation, the word Vernaccia actually means vernacular in Italian and it can apply to lots of different local varietals. We have some very unusual Vernaccias, some white skin, some black skin that actually make red wine from Sardinia and Marca. So those can be a little bit confusing. I just want to kind of parse that out now so you understand that we're talking about this wine and specifically focusing on Tuscany. Now the town of San Gimiano, if you've never been there, is a beautiful medieval city uh, actually perched up on the top of a hill. And the ground and the vineyards that surround San Gimiano are perfect for growing the Vernaccia grape. Why? It's because the sand, the soil is actually uh, decomposed sandstone. And that's what this grape actually loves to grow in. And it produces a beautiful glycerin laden, full body type of white wine that's beautifully acidic, but also has a higher sugar content. So therefore it can have a higher alcohol content once it's been fermented. Now when we, in Italy, we often talk about DOCs and DOCGs and those are Italy's highest recognition of tradition and also quality. Well, this wine got its first DOC in 1966, and it also got its DOCG in 1993. So once again, you'll see the DOCG label on a bottle of Vernaccia de San Gimiano. Now, according to those wine laws, anytime you see this type of wine, it must be a minimum of 90% Vernaccia. It can be 100%. And in that 10% uh, of the grapes that can be used as blending grapes, they must be what they call non-aromatic varietals. In other words, they want the star of the show to be Vernaccia. So understanding that, there's also one DOCG additional law, and that is occasionally you'll see a Vernaccia de San Gimiano Reserva. And in that case, that means this wine had to be aged a minimum of 12 months, four months of which was in the bottle. So this is a great wine that pairs with white type of meats, and most specifically white meats that are finished in herbal sauces. This wine really brings out the beautiful depth of the herbal sauces. Think of a chicken pasta primavera with a little bit of an herbal flair to it. This wine would be beautiful with that. Also, because it's pretty acidic, it also pairs with a wide variety of different fishes. So let's dive in and take a look and see what you can expect when you go into your wine store and pick up a Vernaccia de San Gimiano. So this wine that I have today is from Chapella Santa Andrea. That's the wine producer. And in this case, let's take a look and see what we see in the glass. So the first thing that we'll notice this wine is, is very pale in color maybe just a slight light yellow, um, but very clear in the glass. If we swirl to liberate the aromas, we get everything from lemon pudding to even a little bit of straw or hay type aromas in this wine. Let's go ahead and take a sip and see how it passes the palate. When we take a sip of this Vernaccia, the first thing that we notice is the incredible complexity. At the front side of the palate, we're met with beautiful citrus flavors. Think things like lemon kind of bordering on tangerine. And there's even just a slight bit of, I don't want to call it sweet because this is a very dry wine, but almost like a sweet type of dried apricot flavor on the front side of the palate. As we hit mid palate, we feel that incredible acidity kick in and the beautiful mouth-watering flavors uh, that exist mid-palate. On the back side of the palate, uh, we feel a little bit of almost 
I don't want to say tannic, but almost like a bitter almond type of flavor on the backside, which adds a little bit more body and a little bit more structure to this wine. All the way through, we feel a little bit of an oily glycerin type of feel to it. So that tells us that it is a little bit more of a full-bodied white. So I'm going to get back and enjoy a little bit more of this Vernaccia, and I ask that you tune in next time, because soon you'll know wine in no time. Thank you.